Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Hello, Knife Junkie, and welcome to the midweek supplemental edition of the Knife Junkie Podcast. It's episode number 73, and I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the show. The Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn all about knives and knife collecting. And it's our midweek supplemental, as we say, and it's the chance for Bob to really dive deep into knives and uh, tell us everything that he knows and wants us to know about knives and knife collecting and talk about some of the new knives in his knife collection, some knife life news coming up. Uh, with Benchmade, Wee, and Hinderer. We're going to talk about a couple of new knives in our collection that actually came from a listener. And then we're going to talk about uh, Bob's Christmas Bowie. And is it a Bowie or a Bowie? Well, this is actually a Bowie because it's uh, a Southern B-O-W-I-E. So it is okay. a Bowie. All right. So we'll hear, we'll hear about the Bowie coming up <laughs> in just a minute. But, uh, you know, hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. Did you have a good Christmas, Bob? Uh, I had a great Christmas. I went Home and visited my my folks. Saw my brother and sister. How about you, Jim? Uh, good time. Stayed here. Had the uh, all the all the family here, and uh, you know, did some Christmas stuff. You know, Christmas presents, and uh, actually went out to uh, see Jumanji, the the new oh, movie. Oh yeah, yeah, day or two after Christmas. Yeah, I really liked that one. So uh, yeah, just just family time, hanging around, chilling. Nothing nothing much uh, spectacular, but just a nice restful week. That's exactly what my family does. We get together. We just. We eat, we talk, we laugh, we chill. And then I usually end up digging around in my parents' garage because, uh, I, that's where I find kind of artifacts from my childhood that are, that mm -hmm. are still left. You know, uh, everything else is gone. But in the, in the garage, I, I was digging around in the garage. This time I was looking for a specific knife, actually, that, uh, we acquired when I was probably four or so. I was with, uh, my oh, mom. Okay at this local um, farm called Cole's Farm. It was this kind of place where you could bring your kids and have pony rides. And this was in the 70s, so it was, there, there was like rope bridges and things that were probably more dangerous than you would find <laughs> right. today. But I remember my mom and I were walking out onto this pier into the middle of this lake. I guess it was a pond. And um, I remember running my hand along the, uh, the, wooden, the rough wooden handrail and kind of looking up at it because I was short. And my mom yanked my hand and we stopped short. And I looked up and there was this knife stuck in the wood, stuck in this uh, handrail. And it was now I, I know it was a marbles hunting knife oh, with wow. a uh, with a nice stag handle and everything. And my mom was so pissed that there should be this knife just left out in the open. And in my mind, it could have sliced my hand clean off. Right. Right. My mom was so pissed. She, she just took the knife out of the thing, put it in her purse. And this is our knife now. And so that knife lived in our garage for years and years. I threw it at wow. trees. It got used for gardening. You know, it was just a jack of all trades. And uh, I was digging around and I did not find it. I was kind of Aww. heartbroken, I got to say. Mom, mom, where'd that knife go? The knife, you know, from Cole's firm. She's like, huh? what are you talking about? What? Like, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, ah. So um, it's it's lost to time. But that knife, I mean, to me, that was a pirate. Like that, that was left over from some sort of bandit or pirate that uh, you know it, it really activated my imagination this could be one reason why i'm a knife junkie i gotta say mm -hmm. uh, i looked for that knife wasn't there but uh wow. i think I, I need to buy a modern modern version of it you know my voice cracked it brings me back <laughs> you Jim. got it got emotional <laughs> now, well i'd be curious as to know what that knife would be worth today in today's marketplace value the way we treated it, it wouldn't be worth a damn. Well, true. <laughs> but stag handle and yeah. Yeah, I tried sharpening it. I mean, that, that knife, that knife took a lot of abuse from my brother, myself, uh, just over the years, my parents. Wow. So yeah. anyway, rest in peace. <laughs> well, that, uh, that reminds me. We asked last week on the uh, supplemental issue to, to make me work editing these podcasts, uh, <laughs> by, by putting in your, uh, your listener line comments and your stories. So, uh, what kind of great knife story do you have like that? You know, remembering a knife back from your early childhood that maybe took you on a wild goose chase to the family garage to try to find it or whatever. Call the listener line at 724-466-4487. Love to hear your uh, favorite knife story or something starting off the year 2020. So give us a call on the listener line at 724-466-4487. Yeah, Jim, on the last episode, we played a couple right up front, and it was so cool to hear the voices 
of listeners that have been with us for a long time, or just anyone who wants to talk about it. Just great to hear voices put to the comments and the and the emails. Well, that was uh, Sunday's episode, episode number 72. We heard from uh, Cabin Man and Charlie the Lefty, both uh, longtime listeners and uh, IG followers and commenters and you're, you know, messaging back and forth. So as you said, yeah, good to uh, have a voice with a name, not yeah. a face, not a face with a name, but a voice with a name just yeah. to, kind of makes it more personal, I guess. Exactly. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So for 2020, Benchmade is discontinuing a number of popular and not so popular uh, models. The one that really kind of shocked me is the proper. Now they're not getting rid of the entire proper line. The proper is Benchmade's foray into traditional slip joint knives. Uh, I know some of our recent guests have taken exception to the term slip joint, but I'm going to use it. They are getting rid of all of the propers that come in red G10. That's the kind of proper I have. I always kind of wanted the, um, the micarta because that's, I'm a micarta lover. But when I found it at REI for the exact amount that was on my uh, REI uh, dividend, I just bought the proper red G10. And now I've, I've been always, uh, I've been thinking I'm going to just dye it because I can't stand that red G10. And maybe that's why they're getting rid of it. It just doesn't work with the whole traditional look of the knife, I think. So wisely, they're getting rid of the proper in red G10, but keeping the proper line uh, in micarta. They're also getting rid of the weird aileron. And I say weird just because it is an interesting and unique design. It was designed by Steve Tarani, who's a knife uh, self-defense expert. Uh, he's a Filipino martial artist, uh, among other things. He's also the designer of a number of famous karambits. But he designed this knife for the Airline Pilots Association. And it's got a very broad blade that sticks out from the, you know, the spine of which sticks out from the handle considerably and then etched, laser etched into the side of the blade is a sort of a traction pattern so that you can, it looks like the tread of a, like a tire, perhaps an airplane tire. And uh, it makes it really easy to open this two-handed. Kind of a gimmicky thing, I guess, but to me, it never, it never really worked uh, for my eye. So I guess that's why I'm, I'm not uh, surprised. It's all. It was also a specialized release, meaning it was uh, right. uh, for a specialized purpose and fewer, th you know, fewer numbers made. So right, right. Uh, they're getting rid of the precipice, which is there um, out the front with the uh, with the spine mounted button, and they're getting rid of the four uh, A, which is kind of an EDC little EDC thing. So um, you know, I say fine. Make make room for some new great models for twenty twenty. Well, I noticed uh, one of the company reps on uh, the Benchmade forum said that they were uh, reducing the number of partially serrated models. Oh, yes. Yes, that's that's right. That's the biggest part of the story. Thanks, thanks for bringing that up, Jim. Yes, finally. So the trend away from serrated and half serrated and partially serrated knives started a long time ago. People, you know. If they want serrations, they will seek them out. I think the idea is you put serrations on a knife, you just sort of uh, 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 cut. What do, what, what do you say? You, you split your split your odds, and you put serrations on everything that you're going to put in a store because you're assuming that the guy who's just walking into a store is just kind of buying a knife, and he's probably not going to keep up with the with a plain edge blade keeping it sharp. So if you put serrations on there, it will kind of always cut. Uh, at least until the death of the knife, basically. Okay. But I think people are more savvy now. People like their plain edges, and if they want serrations, they will seek them out. People are now more savvy with sharpening, not as afraid to uh, buy a sharp maker and start, you know, working on their edge or what have you. So I think that is a a very smart choice by Benchmade. I I bet they're they're selling way more plain edge blades than they are partially serrated. Plus, I gotta say. Some companies make partially serrated look good, like Microtech, Emerson also. But Benchmade does not make partially serrated look good. They got mm. this weird, funky thing down by the choil. There's always a little lobe of unsharpened steel that just, it just looks awkward. And it seems like it might not work right. But that's just, that's just my eye. Right. 
Well, more than uh, 20 models uh, being discontinued with more than a dozen of those uh, having the serration. So uh, perhaps a, a trend for Benchmade. Yeah, and, and a trend for them recently has been coming out with really sweet knives with great uh, quality insurance, uh, assurance. So let's, let's hope that trend continues also. I want to see some cool, new, different looking knives from them. Well, speaking of uh, new knives, uh, more in the Knife Life news segment, we're going to talk about we, some late 2019 year-end new model reveals, if you will. You want to talk specifically about one of them, though, I think. Yeah, the Scopio. It's a new folding, flipping folding variant of the Riazzo, which is a fixed blade that they came out with at the beginning of this year, which really caught my eye. It's one of the few fixed blades that we has put out. I say few relative to how many folders they've put out. Uh, and it's this beautiful, multifaceted, uh, uh, compound ground fixed blade with a, with a blade to handle ratio that's about one to one. It, so it kind of looks like a folder with a great hand, uh, blade to handle ratio. But anyway, so they're, they're releasing a folding version of this, a flipper version called the, um, Scopio. And, this was designed by this guy, uh, Tony Tietzel from TNT Knives. I shouldn't say this guy. The designer's name is. And uh, I have to say, the Scopio is an even more elegant version of the fixed blade, In my, uh, to my eye. It's got a slightly sharper point. Uh, the blade is beautiful, and it's a 3.6 inch, you know, so it's a, it's, it's a little bit over medium, and it's just got a, a beautiful neutral looking handle but you got that flipper there which stops your hand from going forward onto the blade and on the fixed bladed version of that there's nothing uh stopping your hand from coming up so i always kind of felt like the fixed bladed version of this was sort of um you know the riazzo was sort of a a novelty a good looking Mm -hmm. uh piece of hand art but not necessarily a fixed blade i would want to carry because it's it's it looked like there was a zero stopping you from coming up uh, onto the blade, no choil, uh, no guard, no nothing. Uh, but with the flipper, you got that flipper holding it down, and it's just a, a beautiful, beautiful knife. Okay, so uh, we continues their uh, their trend of releasing more and more knives every year. So <laughs> they also have this cool looking uh, push push dagger thing. Uh, it's a it's a really uh, skeletonized titanium knife. But I have to do more research on on titanium knives. But this looks like a last ditch kind of thing. What do you mean by that last ditch? Like, it's not the kind of knife you keep on you to cut cardboard uh, continually. You keep it on you uh, in case you got to use it once and bail. <laughs> your, your your famous knife fight scene. When yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, continuing the trend of releasing more knives at the end of the year, uh, Hinderer. They uh, capped off the year of 2019 with a new fixed blade model that you want to talk about for, for a bit. Yeah, yeah my beloved Hinderer knives. Uh, has come out with the Hinderer Ranch Harpoon Spanto. Rolled what right off the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> the Hinderer Ranch was a fixed blade that came out with a uh, year ago. I, th- I think it was in 28, maybe sometime in 2017, 2018. Uh, a fixed bladed Bowie knife, uh, about five and a half inch bladed Bowie. And just a beautiful, beautiful knife. Now they've come out with a kind of the same version of that knife, except with the uh, famed Spanto blade. That's uh, something Rick Hinderer came up with. It's got a the length of the blade is is uh, thin and uh, thinner and uh, more slicey, and then the the front part of the blade is thicker, kind of like a, an Americanized Tanto that uh, you can use that tip for um, utility and puncturing and stuff without without worrying about it because there's so much meat up there. Well, Hinderer also puts the harpoon on the top that's a harpoon swedge it's kind of an extra bit of material but it's uh, in cross section shapes the the tip kind of like a diamond so it penetrates better so now i'm going to uh editorialize just a little bit on that shape really yes imagine that <laughs> so this is just me and this is just my eye i i, I understand that the harpoon swedge on on any knife enhances its Ability to puncture just because it, it, it changes the, the cross section of the tip. But I hate the way it looks, Jim. I hate a harpoon huh. swedge. People love it. People love it. And, and, uh, you know, if you're going to, if you love it, Hinderer does it great. Uh, and it looks, uh, like it's uh, a, a workhorse, this knife. 
and it's beautiful. You know, it's a, it's got O1 tool steel. It's parkerized and it's got a walnut grip. It's their vintage series trim, at least for this first release of the ranch harpoon spanto. But something about that, that harpoon sweat. Does anyone else feel that way? Please, please let me know, you know, <laughs> because I, I feel like I'm the only person out there who thinks the harpoon swedge kind of makes things look awkward and lo- like they might stick, you know, if, if the, if the point is puncturing power, what if you puncture a little too far, then you have to pull it back out and, and that harpoon swedge will, will, will make that more difficult. Thoughts? <laughs> Okay, well, let's get listener line thoughts first. 724-466-4487, 724-466-4487. I'm looking at the picture, you know, and I I guess I'm ambivalent. I mean, I, I like it. I could see your point uh, about not liking it. I mean, I don't dislike it, but, um, yeah, I, I, you know, now that I'm, as I'm looking at it, I, eh, I might like it a little better without it, but Does, I don't yeah. dislike it. I think people should let us know, does it break the flow visually? Okay. Now, and, and I'm not just talking about this subject visually. Okay. Okay. There's also the extraction problem, you know. If it's sharpened up on, on the tip and you make a puncture and you cut it, it's probably not going to have any trouble coming back out, right? Because it looks like it's got that uh, nice sh- sharpness to it coming back on the backside, too. I don't think that's sharp. I think that's the full width of the blade behind that switch. Okay. But uh, maybe, maybe Rick Hinderer will come on the podcast at some point and address this with me. I would love to talk about that. Well, changing subjects, going from one end to the other, I really like the handle. The what would you say, old walnut, the wood hand? Yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah that's walnut, like an old rifle, kind of. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, definitely like to uh, get some more knowledgeable knife folks' opinion uh, than mine. <laughs> Not the knife chunkies, but, uh, but, you know, more knowledgeable than me about the uh, the harpoon swedge. I can see your point that it looks like, why the point? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> it looks a little extra, extra yeah. on the edge of the blade, on the on the end of the blade. Uh, but I got to say, you're you're right about that handle. Oh, my God, it's sumptuous. Yeah. And then it's, it's also got that... Uh, that old school rifle look, especially with the parkerized tool yeah. of the blade. Yeah. Well, maybe that uh, swedge harpoon blade. Maybe that's the reason they need to call uh, price it at four hundred dollars. Maybe that's what makes it four hundred. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's also hinderer. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> Enough about that. Love to hear from you about your thoughts about the the hinderer knives and uh, the new the new knife. Uh, to end 2019 as we are in 2020 now, Bob. We yes. have mentioned that. This is our New Year's Day edition. That's Happy true. New Year. Oh, my God. <laughs> Happy New Year to you, sir. I mean, can you imagine 2020? I, I, I'm i okay. I, I'm, I may be revealing my age, but I mean, to me, I'm like 2020 when I was a kid, you know, Obviously, you, you hear this a lot. We're we're flying in our in our cars to work, and no, we only have to work two days a week because everything's automated and somehow producing wealth for us. Uh, but well, you know, yeah, this is darn, the real twenty twenty, and it's it's gonna, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say this is the real twenty twenty, and it's going to be a, a fantastic year. Right. Yeah, still having to drive myself to work. Finally. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right. Who knows? All right, maybe sometime. <laughs> And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. All right. That's it for Knife Life News. Let's move on to another topic of discussion. Two new knives, one for you, one for me. And yeah. we've got to say big thanks. Big, big thanks to our buddy Stu. Yep. Yep. Stu up in Vermont. Stu of Stone and Steel, uh, New England knife sellers. Great guy. Has, has been a good friend of the show for half the year, uh, at least that I've known of. And um, we've been in, in semi-constant contact. What a great guy. He, uh, he sent us a Christmas present. Yeah. One for me Each and of one us. for you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so uh, I'm going to talk about mine first, Jim, if you don't mind. Go right ahead. I'm so excited about this knife. I, it, I couldn't kick it out of my pocket all, all Christmas vacation. And it is the uh, Todd Knife and Tool Designed Best Tech Malware, or as I like to call it, my Vikings Gentleman Carry, Space Age Vikings Gentleman Carry. So Stu heard me talking about this with Terrell Todd uh, when we were talking about uh, their designs for Todd Knife and Tool. 
And I told him I was fascinated with it and was really looking forward to getting my hands on it because I had just gotten the Roxy 4, a beefier 4-inch Warncliffe folder. Uh, this uh, malware is a near Warncliffe. It's got a little bit of a belly, but it's got this long, long clip on the on the back end. And by clip, I mean, I don't know, slope down to the point. It's a long, thin, beautiful blade, and it's been uh, really well executed by Best Tech. My exposure to Best Tech is limited to the, um, what is it, the, the Tanto, D2 Tanto that they have, uh, the Katana, I can't remember what it's called, I'm sorry. Uh, but that was a fantastic knife and a budget knife. This is their high end, and man, Best Tech is killing it. But Todd Knife and Tool, they just make a cool looking knife. They design a gorgeous knife. And this thing, though it's all angular looking, fits in the hand so beautifully. The one Achilles heel of this knife design is not, it's not an Achilles, it's, it's not of the design itself, it's of the user. It's got a tip that I'm terrified of breaking because it's <laughs> so perfect and acute and pointy. And, uh, so I am just, uh, using this for, uh, delicate, things. It's sort of a gentleman's carry. And a Viking because it looks like a, a space age sax. So mm. anyway, Stu, thank you so much for this. I, I really appreciate it. It blows me away, uh your generosity and uh yeah man, thank you and, and just uh keep the home fires burning and, and I and people when you're up in uh New England and you're at a knife or a gun show, seek out stone and steel. You will not be disappointed. Well, and Stu uh, left us a voicemail message that we played on the Christmas Eve show that I think he's got a next show he's going to be at is uh, March 24, 25, if I remember correctly. So sometime in March, uh, he'll be at a at a show. So selling and uh, I, I, Stu, I just got to echo Bob's you know thoughts. You know, I, I, I'm totally just blown away, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I never <laughs> suspected anybody to would, would a listener would give me a knife. Yeah. You know. So you're talking about what the CRKT CEO that he gifted you? Yeah, and I love it. I uh, I pulled it out of the box and you know showed my wife, my daughter, my son. I was like, <laughs> look what I got! Look what I got! And uh, of course, you know, like within the first thirty minutes of you know opening it and having it, I, f I found a cardboard box that just was begging to be cut up. You know, I had to use it, <laughs> and man, was it slicey and just. Just went through that, uh, went through that night, uh, went through that box. But, uh, I, I don't know all the words to use to describe it like you described your knife, but I love the pocket clip because I, I wear button down shirts to work and I can just slip it in the pocket or, you know, yep. underneath, um, under, you know, inside the shirt underneath a, you know, kind of like, I don't know how to yeah, describe yeah, it. Yeah, right, kind of, kind of. In in the front where you button like yeah you yeah, down the middle where you buttons pin. yeah yeah and it looks just like a like you said looks like it'd be a pin nobody knows that I've got a knife and I can just pull it out and Jim's walking around with a knife on his chest now I know man I love it. <laughs> I and, love it. and the the handle when 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 we we opened this and you came you we got him a couple of days before Christmas when we were both at work you brought it up and we both opened ours up what I love the handle it's it's kind of brownish with a little pattern what. Yeah, that's what GRN, you call it? actually. That's glass reinforced nylon, which is a which is a budget minded material, a high value material, but they made it look expensive, I gotta say. It they made nice, it look like yeah. carbon fiber. Look sharp. Yeah. So this pen is meant to kind of mimic I mean, I'm sorry, this knife is kind of mi meant to mimic a pen in the pockets. So yeah. Yeah. Just so uh, if people don't know. Tell me about the opening. Well, I'm I'm still playing with it, still learning how to open it. Um, I still have to use two hands <laughs> to get it open. Uh, I have not been able to figure out how to quite, uh, you know, flick it open uh, with one hand. But um, yeah. yeah. Oh, there we go. I did oh, it that, that time. <laughs> it's definitely a feel thing. You'll find yeah. you'll find the right angle. You'll bury your thumb in there, and, yeah. and you'll flick it out. That blade hides completely in the handle. Is that right? When it's closed? Yes, it does, and okay. it is sharp. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember when I yeah, very pointy. I remember when I opened it up and I was uh, showing my family and everything, and I said, "Oh, and look, and the tip it's so sharp." And I just put my finger on it and was, "Ow, that <laughs> is sharp." Serves but, you yeah, right. <laughs> that's right. But yeah, that's just beautiful. That is a nice and that HCR yeah. thirteen MOV. 
which is a great everyday steel because it sharpens up easily. And unless you're using it over and over and over, you know, you're fine with that steel. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't help but notice, Jim, that Blade HQ has an exclusive version of that. Oh, look at that. That is gorgeous. <laughs> Jim keeps holding it up to the camera. Right. <laughs> so now I have to buy one. <laughs> Sorry, listeners, you can't see it, but yeah. It's not. <laughs> they have uh, Blade HQ has one with brass fittings and um, green micarta handles. That looks cool. Hmm. But I think it makes it a little bit heavier, which might defeat the purpose, but I don't know. Right. Yeah, this is very light and could definitely fit in the pocket. I mean, I've, I had it in my pocket on, on Christmas Day because we were opening presents and everything. Yeah. And it was like, you know, hardly knew it was there. It was not very heavy at all. So, man, I, again, Stu, I just, you know, I, I'm just blown away. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. The only knives that have ever been given to me have been by the Knife Junkie, except until now. So, Stu, <laughs> thank you. Well, it's not only that, but he also picked, it seems like he picked the exact right knife to get you. He did. Man, this was awesome. Thanks, Stu, buddy. Yeah. All right. I guess we can both quit gushing about our new knives. <laughs> <laughs> well, not quite yet, because I have one more. Oh, that's my, right. My brother, Vic, uh, who, who left a message on the last, uh, the last supplemental, Mm -hmm. uh, and has gotten me many, many, many a cool knife and uh, knife-like object in the past. Did not fail this Christmas and got me this uh, incredible Confederate buoy. And I'm going to say buoy because it's from the South and that's how they say it down South. It's got a 10 and 1 8 inch Bowie blade, hollow ground. It's got a brass S-curved quillion guard here with the one in the front a little bit longer. And it's got a big lobe down at the bottom. It's got a 15-pin bone handle. And it's got a brass butt cap. This thing is really, really cool. If you watch Thursday Night Knives live, it will be hanging on the wall behind me from now on. It is such a cool knife. Now, uh, my brother and I were looking at this, and the tang stamp says W.J. McElroy, 1863. And then you flip it, and it says Macon, Georgia. Now, of course, this made us want to research this knife, and uh, uh, the jury is out. My brother, uh, the, the person from whom my brother bought this, he's gotten a lot of cool World War II artifacts and, and stuff like that, and the guy uh, thought it was real, and then looking it up online, we, we found a knife that looked just like it, and a little bit of conversation on a, bla on a knife forum, and guess who was on that? That was Mark Zaleski was a part of that conversation, guest from... Uh, the Knife Junkie Podcast, episode 70. He is the editor of Knife Magazine and a renowned Bowie expert who literally wrote the book on um, the American Bowie knife uh, for a big exhibition in Arkansas a few years back. He weighed in on the conversation, is this actually a Civil War era Confederate Bowie? And um, I'm going to need to talk to him and uh, and find out what he thinks about this. It, the, it is, if it isn't, It'll do until the real thing gets here because this thing is <laughs> incredible. I I love it. It's it's um it's definitely a carbon steel. The the tank stamp actually looks legit, but you know things can be faked easily. If it if it right. is a fugazi, as they say, it's a good one. What did it say again? What is it stamped with? What's the the marks or the words? W J McElroy M C E L R O Y, and then eighteen sixty three. And uh, the sheath it came with is is obviously not the original sheath, even if even if this weren't made in 1863, uh, the uh, the sheath is obviously a second sheath, but also very old. So mm -hmm. it's it's a, just a cool piece and and kind of a little mysterious. And so I think I'm going to have to get in touch with Mark Zaleski and find out what he thinks about it. In the Bowie realm, he is the man for asking. And uh, as I mentioned, you will see it on the wall behind me, over my right shoulder. From now on, it's it's going to find its place in and amongst my Filipino and American knives. Well, and as you said, Mark Zaleski, uh, episode number 70. You can listen to that at thenifejunkie.com slash 70. And if for some reason you happen to have any thoughts or opinions about uh, Bob's buoy stamp W.J. McElroy, 1863, Call the listener line, 724-466-4487, 724-466-4487, or know of any resources or websites or anything like that, maybe where Bob can find more information. That would certainly be helpful. Bob also mentioned Thursday Night Knives. That's his live video show, which is going to be live tomorrow night. 
And that's uh, if you are listening to this podcast when it comes out on January 1st. If you're listening on Thursday, January 2nd, hey, join us tonight for Thursday Night Knives. It's at 10 p.m. on uh, YouTube, as well as our private Facebook group. If you're not a member of the private Facebook group, uh, we encourage you to uh, to join the knifejunkie.com slash Facebook. You can watch it on either locale or right on the Knife Junkie website at the knifejunkie.com slash live. We'll have the live show right on the website. I just want to say, Vic, uh, thanks again for this awesome Bowie knife. And thanks for always remembering that I never, ever get sick of receiving knives or blades. A lot of people gift giving. I don't want to give them another knife. I gave them a knife last year. I don't want to be repetitive. Well, it's not about you. It's about me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. and, be repetitive. <laughs> uh, Vic understands. <laughs> he understands. I never right. get sick of it. So thanks again, Vic. This is an awesome gift. A Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Well, and I loved his uh, his message that he left on the uh, supplemental edition uh, last week. So, yeah, thanks yeah. for that. All right, Bob. Amazing. Our time is uh, about up, buddy. We, we, yeah. we filled another supplemental. Just bloviating about knives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days I'm going to learn how to spell that since we say it so much. <laughs> All right. Happy New Year, everybody. Thanks for uh, being with us on the Knife Junkie podcast. We look forward to the year 2020 and look forward to having you join us on the Knife Junkie podcast as well as Thursday Night Knives. Please call the listener line. Shoot Bob an email at bob at thenifejunkie.com. If you have any questions, you have any suggestions, show topics, things you'd like to talk about, things you'd like to see featured on uh, knife videos or seen on the Knife Junkie's Thursday Night Knives live video, We'd love to hear from you and get your suggestions and feedback. That's right. Uh, please give us a call. We love to hear your voices. Strangely enough, it, it means a lot to actually hear the, the human being behind the, behind the comment or the email. So, uh, again, everybody, Happy New Year, and thanks for tuning in, and thanks for making this such a great year and being a part of this knife conversation. It's been such a pleasure. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Knife Junkie.